What is that? My first reaction when I see the python is, he's a big boy, but then straight away, you're drawn to this lump. It's huge and it's hard. But what the hell is it? How are you going, Dad? I'm oh, fine, thanks. Are you, are you close to home? Yeah, I'm pretty close now. With a weekend off vet duties, Chris is heading to Newcastle to visit his mum and dad. Well, is there any chance that you could make a detour? Why? Well, listen, Tom from Wise has contacted me and he needs someone to help him out with a snake that's in a chook shed. It doesn't sound like much of an emergency, though, a snake in a chook shed. Well, he reckons you might find, them, find it interesting when you get there. <laughs> yeah, well, OK. OK, thanks, Chris. Bye. Bye. Unbelievable. What? I get home so rarely and then the first opportunity I have to do it in so long and Dad sends me in the opposite direction. Dad hates snakes, so this all makes perfect sense. How convenient. It's another two hours before Chris finally reaches the farm. Hello, hey Tom. It's really good to see you again, Chris. I was expecting some sort of drama. What's, oh, what's going on? There's Michaela, this is Bob, they're the owners here. Hi, hi. Good day, mate. Good to see you. They had an unexpected visitor in the hen house today and uh, we've got something up there we'd like you to have a look at. Good boy, aren't you? What is that? My first reaction when I see the python is, he's a big boy, but then straight away, you're drawn to this lump. It's huge and it's hard. But what the hell is it? I think it's a marble egg. A, a, mar a marble egg? Yeah, yeah. What, they're, laying, they're laying marble eggs in here now? Yeah, 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 right. Now we put them in there to encourage the chickens to use particular boxes because they all crowd into one box. So we put in a fake egg and I think he's eaten it. You're kidding me. Uh -uh. Python was just doing what pythons do. They go looking for meals. So he's come right here, looked for a few eggs, then found the mother load. You want this back? I'd like it back if I could, please. <laughs> Michaela's sister gave her the egg as a gift. It's about the size of a duck egg. I think it's about that big. I've been trying to think of a name for him, and the one that really makes sense to me, Rocky. It's just because he's obviously got a fight in his hands. That's, that's the only reason. There's a lot of joking around, but medically, this is quite serious. I would have hoped that this python may have even had a chance at regurgitating this egg back up, but now looking at where it's lodged, it's just too far down. Even you know, with all the, the great forceful digestion these guys have, all the enzymes, yeah. you can't break down marble. My feeling is it's gonna be really hard to avoid surgery here because that egg can't get out any other way. And if it was to stay there, it's going to block up his digestion, it's going to cause a lot of pain, and it will eventually kill him. Chris is a long way from Bondi Beach. He was meant to be catching up with his parents in Newcastle. Instead, he's now on a mercy dash into Coffs Harbour with a sick snake that's managed to swallow a large marble egg. Drove gently. Tom from the rescue group Wires has arranged for Rocky the Python to be x-rayed at a local vet hospital. He's in pretty good condition, condition isn't really, he? isn't he? Yeah. He's, He's so healthy, shiny. Yeah. yeah. Very healthy. You can actually see the outline of it there. So you can see the other eggs that it's eaten. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no doubt what was going on. <laughs> so two small eggs and one large. It's a lot bigger than I actually thought it would be. And it's probably pressing on his skin and the wall of his intestine and stomach probably a bit more than I, I'd, I'd hoped it would have been. So this is now probably a bit bigger deal than we thought. Rocky needs to go under the knife immediately. The one main weakness of reptiles is stress. They don't really handle it too well and can mean you can actually lose them under anaesthetic or after the operation. The problem is getting them asleep. Once they're asleep, hopefully it will all go OK, but then you've got to wake them up at the end as well. The quicker the surgeon is, the safer it is for the animal. It's 
snakes have a habit of twisting under anaesthetic, the way you prevent the twisting is tape them to a board. At Coffs Harbour, Chris is about to start surgery on Rocky. The big test will be whether he'll feel the incision. The python swallowed a marble egg, which, if not removed, will shut down his system and kill him. The tricky thing is, it's going to be a decent sized incision to remove something that is so huge. Here we go. Just a blood vessel sitting exactly where I don't want it to be, just right where the incision is. So just having to do a little bit of a sidestep around that. Just very conscious of the fact that blood loss is a big issue with snakes and, and surgeries. And with Rocky already being under stress here, we've got to be especially careful with that. So it's all about keeping bleed him to an absolute minimum. I can feel it on my scalpel blade. I've hit something that isn't snake. It's stone. Chris has finally seen the marble egg that's landed Rocky in so much trouble. As any good chicken knows, it's hard to pass an egg. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to get this out. One marble egg with African pattern with a beautiful zebra Wonderful. featured on the front of it. The thing that really surprised you is just how heavy it is. It's really solid and really heavy. And potentially for, for Rocky, this is actually the most dangerous part because if he was to actually have some sort of leakage from this wound here, then that's going to cause a serious infection and it would be enough to kill him for sure. This is the last stitch here. The hardest thing right now is just the waiting. We've got through the surgery, everything's been done, and now we just want Rocky to spring back to life, and that'll make me feel better, but now it's just nothing going on. Just give me something. You all right? It's now three hours since the surgery finished, and the python still hasn't woken up. He's cold, so his whole metabolism slowed right down. If we can speed up his metabolism, he's going to wake up a bit faster. And then the sign everyone has been hoping for. There we go. It's just starting to curl up his tail here now, so it's our first signs of, of real life here. Look at that. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Tom. Hi, Chris. That's our patient. One slightly slimmer snake. Oh, look at this. He's still a little bit groggy. He looks great. And one slightly used decorative marble egg. That's remarkable. <laughs> Is it something? The fight's not over for Rocky because he has to get through the anaesthetic, recover from that tonight, and then tomorrow really focus on healing internally. Thank you very much. That's all right, mate. But tonight really decides whether he has a great future or not. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. No worries. Yeah. Cheers. Tom. Go, Chris yeah. in here. How you going? Hey, mate. How you going? Good. How are you? Good to see you. <sighs> I'm nervous, mate, OK? That's, that's how I am. I understand. It's been less than 24 hours since Chris removed this marble egg from Rocky. Without emergency surgery, the python would have died. Look, mate, I'm really happy with how that looks. It's nice and clean. He's been fantastic. He's had more sleep than I've had, and I'm tired now. <laughs> He's going back to the, the favourite position, <laughs> the blue hand position, he calls it. Um, just trying to finish me off once and for all. Chris's rescue mission in Coffs Harbour is almost complete. There's just one last matter to attend to. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh. That's it, right? Ooh. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. It looks a bit different. <laughs> what would it look like before? I think it was orange. It was orange before. It's not pink. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it is quite different. Is that actually. a stomach acid? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. I was really happy to have this back, but more importantly, I'm happy that Rocky has actually survived this. As much as it pains me to say it, 
Dad was right, and I don't think I'll ever see a snake with that sort of problem ever again. But I don't think I'll see this weekend again either. It's gone. So, I'm back to Bondo. Oh my God, so embarrassing. <laughs> Nine-month-old Ava has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash with a bizarre problem. She went in the laundry and she stole some underwear. I was chasing her, tried to uh, stop her, but she wouldn't stop. She would eat everything. And it was too late. I can't feel anything stuck well, here. They were very small. <laughs> were they small ones? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's oh embarrassing. God, it's embarrassing. I'm getting from the One tiny G-string could cause Ava serious internal problems. There is a chance it can pass through and she'll poop it out, but there's probably more risk than anything that it's going to get stuck somewhere along her gut, and that's bad news for Ava because that would mean surgery. The easiest way to get them out would be to make her vomit, which happens pretty quickly. Yeah. We give her yeah. an injection. Yeah. Um, if she vomits, it will come out, hopefully come out straight away. But there is a big risk with making them vomit because it's, it's something that, that is yeah. Yeah, yeah, of fabric, course, of course. that when they vomit, they can actually choke on it. And, and that can be life-threatening. Give her a cuddle. Oh, please. For your best, yeah? Ava's swallowed her mummy's G-string. Lovely. <laughs> so mummy's very embarrassed about it, but I think we've caught it early, so hopefully we can get her to vomit okay. and um, get it out the easy way. Okay. The biggest problem that can happen with making a dog vomit up something that's soft and large is that when they're vomiting, it can become stuck in their airways, so they can choke. So we need to have a catheter ready, an anaesthetic ready, because if that happens, we've got to anaesthetise her straight away and get that thing out. All right, Ava, just a bit noisy, sweetheart. Just a bit noisy. All right, sweetheart. Oh, no. I know. Oh, no. I know. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. These always oh, freak me out at the best of times because it can really go pear-shaped. All right, Ava, Ava, oh, Ava, 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 Ava. The stop, it's so over. The stop, it's over. Actually, not really. <laughs> I'm going to make you feel a bit sick soon. Really worried, really, really worried, and I just hope that uh, she could vomit, and uh, and that's all. That's all I hope. I'm sorry. I hate giving them this. It's not nice. so mean. All right, gorgeous. Now we wait. I oh, know, sweetheart. Oh, I feel so mean. <laughs> I feel nauseous yourself. Mm. Here we go. Here we go. Good girl. Good girl. That's a girl. Mm. It's not ideal. <laughs> when Ava vomited the first time and there was nothing there, I honestly, my heart skipped a beat. I was really anxious. Lisa's now worried the tiny spaniel won't be able to bring up the underwear. The next option is emergency abdominal surgery. All right, baby, Maybe on. the second time lucky. Come on, sweetheart. Honestly, I've never been more happy to see a G-string. Good news. <laughs> they match your top, I see. <laughs> they match my top. They match your top too. Yeah, that's right. I've Everything given them, I've given them a rinse. Thank um, you. <laughs> she, she, they came out really easily. So. <laughs> Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> Ava is ecstatic to be reunited oh, with yeah. Monia. But in the future, can the naughty puppy resist her owner's lingerie? She's obviously empty. <laughs> oh. She's going to have to learn her lesson now, lock up the underwear, lock up anything that Ava can get to. She's got a ferocious appetite and I really don't think she's going to grow out of it. <laughs> you stick to dog food, huh? No more underwear, you see? No. But I hope that she's learned the lesson. Hmm? Have you? Maybe. <laughs>
two unexpected visitors arrive at the Richmond Clinic. Scott's wife, Zoe, with their new puppy, Scully. Hello. Hey. Hey, honey. <laughs> OK. Look who I brought to see you just because they love you. Hello, monkey pants. What are you doing? There may be just a tiny but quite significant chance that there is the other end of a dummy in her. Great. It's just that sort of day. Suddenly, Zoe walks in with our new puppy, Scully. No, it's not a social visit to cheer us up. Apparently, she swallowed a dummy, which is not the news I want to hear right now. And I hope this isn't going to turn out to be a serious problem. I found two Brilliant. dummies like this, but mm. I've only found one of these. And the only reason I found that is because she threw it up. Right. So she threw that one up this morning, and she has eaten and been sick again since, but no sign of the second one. My team and I brought Scully into the world just recently. All right, babies, uh, you come. OK, here's on baby catching duty, Ems. I'm on. It was a complicated birth, and it was touch and go for a while there. Any luck? No, not yet. But her brothers and sisters and her are all fighters. Oh, I did hear a squeak. Oh, squeaking. After everything that we went through with how close we were to losing her, it is just so gutting that she's already back at the practice. All right, let me have a little feel. Uh, unfortunately, I can feel what I believe to be this dummy. What we'll do is we'll do uh, a quick x-ray with her conscious. We won't knock her out, and we'll see if we can see it on x-ray. Yeah. And then we're going to have to work out what we're going to have to do. I'm really worried for Scully. People might think that a dummy teat, ah, it's soft, it should break down. But if it passes from her stomach into her small intestine, it could block. She could then get infection, she could get septicemia, and she could die. You are very naughty. Yes, you are. This is an incredibly dangerous predicament, and that dummy needs to come out. Can't be mad with you, though, because you're so gorgeous. But you're very naughty. So be ready just to take this shot once I've got her in position. Ready? X-ray. Right, let's have a look. So jump in there. Hmm. So let's see if we do that. That's uh that's quite compelling evidence, isn't it? Yep. You fluffy doofus. So the x-ray is fairly clear as to where this missing teat is. The concern is how we're going to get it out. It's quite big, she's quite small, and at the moment we're quite worried as to whether she's going to bring it up or if I'm going to have to go in and get it. Let Uncle Nathan hold you. Scott is desperately hoping to avoid surgery, so he's giving Scully an injection of apomorphine to make her vomit. I know, I'm sorry, sweetie. All right. How quickly is this going to work, Scotty? Very quickly. Yeah, she'll start vomiting. Hey, just pull back your ears. Just think it's this or possible anaesthetic and surgery. Come on, sweetie, throw it out, please. Good girl. That's it. Sorry, sweetheart. Come on, baby, go on, throw it out, please. Let's go on, go on, come on. Anything? The injection works. But there's no sign of the teat. Come on, baby. But on the second attempt... Hey! <laughs> Good puppy! Good puppy! Good puppy. Keep on being sick. Normally, I'd wear gloves for this, but uh, with my fingers covered in our dog's sick, it must be love. Hey, must be love. I've never been quite so excited to watch a dog vomit. And uh, she's avoided surgery. It was like a trying a conversion all in one. But I would like her to not eat anything like that again. <laughs> Good puppy. Hey. It's an incredible relief. Uh, and a weight off my shoulders that Scully's brought up this teat. It seems like a little thing, it's just a bit of plastic that a little puppy's vomited, but it means her daddy doesn't have to put her under the knife and perform surgery, so we're all very happy.
No more dummies in the Miller household. No. All right? Poor baby. We're going to take the doggies for a swim. Yeah, is that lovely? Here we go. Here we go, Pug Pug. <laughs> Scully's like, this Good is girl, very Benny. new. What do you this think? As for mischievous little Scully, She's been on her best behaviour since the dummy ordeal. It's a good girl. And today, Scott and the family are enjoying some precious playtime together. Daddy, can you... <laughs> it's like a wet mop head. Daddy, <laughs> You want to hold that? <laughs> She's made a huge impact on our lives. The kids absolutely love her. Betty adores her and she's got a new spring in her step. And I honestly can't see a life without her. What do you think, Scully? Any good? Oh, uh, Scully's first go. Well, not too bad, nice. although Scully does turn out to be a drowned rat underneath all that. Come here. I was fishing. Just baited the hook up, and yeah, before the time I could get the bait in the water. He swallowed it, so a bit of a bugger. I didn't catch any fish, but I caught my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Harley, a 10-year-old American Staffordshire Terrier, has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after swallowing a fish hook. I actually pulled the line and didn't realise it was actually in his throat. Hope it hasn't wedged in too far. Hi, I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. It's a quick consultation with emergency vet Lisa Chimes. So we'll x-ray his chest to have a look if it's in his esophagus and we'll also x-ray his abdomen to have a look if it's further down. Come on, Harley. If Harley's esophagus has to be cut open, that's going to be awful news for Chad. It's a delicate operation and the risk is that his esophagus or food pipe may never heal properly and Harley may never be able to eat normally again. You'd be good for this, Harley. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. All right, bud. Harley. <laughs> All right. Excellent. <laughs> it's not going to work, is it, mate? Huh? Look, the tail's wagging. I know. We'll try and do this without sedation. Ten-year-old Harley has swallowed Harley, a fish hook. Harley. Lisa needs to find exactly where it's lodged, oh, but the powerful Staffy oh, is winning the battle. Little sting. It's a boy. That was very brave, Harley. A quick sedation has now stacked the odds in Lisa's favour. Now, round two. There, you're a good boy now with some happy juice. Hey, it's a good boy. boy. Harley, now, Harley, 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 Harley. Oh, Outside, an anxious Chad is waiting for news. Yeah, I've got two kids, a ten and eight-year-old. He was with us first, and then we had our daughter six months later. And, yeah, so he's like one of the kids. Apparently, Dad's in the bad books. Yes, I'm always doing something wrong. <laughs> always. Oh, dear. The hook is in his esophagus. You can see it right there. We can't leave that there. That needs to come out. See what you've done? Look. No comment. That's a boy, you lie down. Specialist vet Darren Foster has the tricky job of trying to remove Harley's deeply wedged fish hook without causing permanent damage. I'm always worried about esophageal foreign bodies because they can go really well and can be quite spectacular or they could be quite difficult to do. And there it is. Fish hooks are particularly difficult because you don't have much room to move and they're quite sharp, obviously. And there are a lot of important structures around the esophagus, like arteries and veins, that we might hit if we turn the hook in the wrong direction. And if we can't get it out very easily, then we'll have to send him to surgery, unfortunately. The frustration is building as the minutes tick by and there's no result. At the moment, it's looking like he's going to need to have surgery, but we don't like to do surgery on esophagus because they, they just don't heal very well. But this is going to work. <coughs> Afraid? They've got it. There you go. We got it. We've got it. 
just in threat of surgery. See. It does have a barb on it. I had given up. I just thought I'd give it one more shot and it worked. So it only has one little hole in his esophagus there, just a little puncture wound, so that should heal nicely. We've seen things from fish hooks to tampons to pantyhose and most of the time we can get them out but there are always the tough ones that get stuck in there and have to go to surgery and Harley was looking like that and Harley's a very lucky boy. Harley, the world's worst fisherman, is ready for release. Oh, he's dead! Well, he's huh? a very lucky boy. <laughs> That's good. Here's the hook. A dreaded hook. Late last night, the American staffy was just seconds away from having his esophagus cut open to remove a fish hook. Good Thank luck. You. Take care. All right, no well, more fishing. No. Yeah. No, that's for sure. It's a good result for Harley. He's got no permanent damage. He'll have to eat soft food for about a week and then he'll be back to normal. And I think we really gave him excellent treatment here and he just wasn't very grateful. He showed us his opinion of the place as he walked out the door. Cheeky bugger. Uh, Monty's 18 years old. I've had her for 16 years. Uh, she's family. She's got her own mind and her own mindset and let her out for a few hours as I clean the house. Got home and daughter's like, where's my towel, Dad? I had a tiger wall for nearly about 40 minutes trying to get it off. I uh, had the door slightly jarred so I could just get the towel out so I didn't want to get her out. Um, and I pretty much was prying it off the clutches until she decided she wanted the towel a little bit more than what I did. Yeah. She swallowed it, towel. I myself have never treated a snake uh, that's ingested a towel before. Sometimes they'll eat like their feeding tongs or something else that might be left in a cage near their feeding item, but definitely not a beach towel. Hold that together. Because Monty is quite an old snake, we really wanted to do the most conservative treatment possible. We wanted to avoid a surgical procedure. So endoscopy is a procedure where we use an instrument with a camera on the end um, and it can be used to go inside of body cavities. It means that we can anaesthetise the patient, put the camera down through the gut um, and then use forceps with the endoscopy to retrieve that towel. It definitely is one of the weirdest procedures I've done. <laughs> Yeah, it was a long five and a half hours uh, to get the phone call. Um, I was actually with my nephew and to get the phone call saying that she actually pulled the towel out. Um, without surgery, I thought was just an amazing, uh, an amazing thing for her to go through. It was actually a lot of hard work. Um, it was very laborious. It doesn't look like it's that hard in the video, but we were using a lot of effort and muscle power. Oh, yeah! I did say to her, you can't be eating any more beach towels. <laughs> uh, we don't want to see you back here. Yeah, very lucky, yeah. Um, extremely lucky, I think. Very lucky. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.